Just like everybody What's going on guys, this is Kazi. Welcome back to another epic video. And this is a pretty important topic to discuss, which is what do you do if you don't have camera information? I have worked on episodic series for years and years where we just didn't have the camera specs. So I would get the footage and it would be a bacon blade situation and I just get to work. So what do you do in that scenario? That's what we're gonna be handling in this tutorial. Once again, it is an extremely important topic. Sometimes you're gonna be working in ASUS and certain cameras are not supported as their IDTs like GoPros, DJI, and tons of other uh, small manufacturers. So what do you do if you're in that situation? You're not always gonna get lucky and find a DCTL that you can slap on and hopefully it'll do a proper conversion and you can go from there. So. That's what we're going to be covering right here. And we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8 bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive QA. And you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that opportunity. Click the link below to watch the free webinar. And guys, it is past midnight. We're going to Hawaii for my wife's birthday tomorrow. I'm here recording this tutorial. So do me a favor, smash that like button. And about 57% of you that are regularly watching content on this channel are not subscribed. So it will mean the world to me. If you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you can be notified when we put out new content. Make sure to check out our Instagram for more behind the scenes and let's roll the intro. All right, so here's a clip that we have absolutely no idea what it was shot on. So what are our options at this point? What are we supposed to do? So let me take you through a couple of different things that you can do before jumping into the process that I'm going to be showing you. So first thing is you can start experimenting with different LUTs, camera conversion LUTs or CST. So let's just say I can drop on a color space transform and then go, what if it's shot with Alexa? So let me try Alexa profiles here and then set this to Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. Let's see what happens. And when I look at the scopes, they're a bit too stretched. So I know for a fact that it wasn't shot on Alexa. It wouldn't open up like this and this crushed. That just won't happen if you're using proper Alexa conversion. So Normally, this is what would happen, right? So you got this clip. It's shot on Alexa. We were provided with the camera specs. So what we can do is we can drop on color space transform. Once again, select RE Alexa and then RE Log C and then Rec 709 here and Gamma 2.4. And as soon as we do that, we get our proper conversion. And this is what I'm talking about. See like how it opens up and nothing is clipping or nothing is crushed. Everything is how it's supposed to be. So this is exactly how it's supposed to look like, right? And we are not getting that here. So what are our other options then? So I'm gonna park it on my hero frame. Let's just say it's at two seconds right here. I'm gonna buy some real estate. So this is looking good. Here's what you can do. And uh, we can properly convert it. So we're gonna emulate and create our own camera profile curve, if you will, that's going to be translated to an entire group of clips that are shot from the unknown camera. OK, so this is what I would do. I would go in here. I will start off with my custom curves. So I'm in my custom curves right now. OK, and uh, let's just go ahead and I'm going to drop on a few points. So I'm going to throw a point up top on my shoulder, one around my toe, and then I'm going to put another one somewhere around here and I'm going to add one more over the shoulder. And once again, I'm not trying to create anything too drastic, okay? I wanna create a really gentle curve that gives me a lot of room to play with pre-conversion, like if this is our conversion, okay? And what else do we need? We definitely need some color because I feel like there's just not enough pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some saturation, but I'm gonna exaggerate it first and then kind of pull it back and uh, keep it somewhere around 68, 69-ish, not, not too bad. And at this point, I'm not going to do any 
primary adjustments or anything like that. Why? Because if you had shot this image like this, and if it was a bit more on the cooler side, and if you had applied your CST or your conversion LUT, it would have looked exactly like this, okay? So you want to keep this open. You don't want to make any adjustments here, okay? So this is basically, uh, think of it as like our log curve, okay? So we did a proper conversion to say Rec 709 um, here. Now I can come in here and start making some adjustments. So what do I need to do? Let's just look at our image. So what do we see? Way too much blue on the top end not necessarily on the bottom end. So it's not like the entire image has a lot of blue. You see that staircase looking situation that's happening here in the parade? That's not happening down here. So our blacks are proper. All we have to do at this point is that I go under my gain and I just start subtracting my blue. And then I'm going to add some red. And right now I'm just looking at the parades, honestly. That's all I'm doing. So I'm looking at the parades and I'm like, okay, like now if I do on and off, like my parades up top are looking really good, but the image overall is too warm because now you can see right here in this area, we got too much warmth in our midtone. So I'm going to go under my gamma then and I'm going to subtract that. Okay. I'm going to put it somewhere around here and that is not bad at all. Okay. So I'm going to, Leave it somewhere around here. Now we got a couple of choices. We can leave our image like this and it has a really nice soft look and it looks really good. And obviously we've come a long way from our log to this, but let's just make some fine tune adjustments. So I'm going to go under my log wheels and I'm going to, I don't want to mess with the rest of my contrast. I really like how there's just so much room to breathe. So I'm just going to take my shadows and I'm going to pull it down. Okay. And I don't even want to go too aggressive with that, but I'm just going to pull it down somewhere around here. And uh, I'm looking at my black points. They're looking really, really good. So I don't need to necessarily mess with it too much. And at that point, what else do we need in our image, right? So like we're looking at it, it's a pretty evened out image and we can see it in our waveform right here. At this point, what we can do is um, I can just maybe add a little bit more warmth in my gain in my highlights and then i'm going to counter that once again with my gamma and i'm just like looking at the skin tones i want the skin to look really good and at this point that's what i would do to attack this and just get it to a point where we are now ready to go so if you have to apply these two nodes to your entire project everything is going to be perfect. You'll be ready to go. You'll be in a really good spot as a base. I mean, this right here, what we did is also um, just a tiny bit of a color too. Like, I mean, I can just really print this if I want to. And once again, I can go in my log wheels and I can keep pulling this down until somewhere around here if I really want to uh, keep some contrast, right? Like, I mean, if I just really want to have some pop in my image, then I can just leave it here. And then, you know, where we started, we created our own log to Rec 709 conversion. And then we just did some primary adjustments, went in our log controls and just brought it down. And with the most effortless changes, we were able to create a really beautiful image that can be applied to our entire project. Let's check out the final look in full screen. Everybody. So as you can clearly see, there's so many different ways to go about color grading. It is highly subjective and don't let anyone tell you that it's either this way or no way. It's just complete BS. And guys, on that note, if you're enjoying the content, you know exactly what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Do not forget to check out that new training. It is a banger. So click on the link, watch it. It's absolutely free. And I will see you guys in the next video.